Hey, thanks for dropping in. I set today to make up for not uploading a recipe last weekend, and I won't go into details of why that happened other than to say life got in the way. I'll be making one of the tastiest dishes in my repertoire, prawn linguine. Now, this is one of those dishes that changes a little bit every time I make it, depending on what's available and how I'm feeling, but some basics remain constant, such as this garlic. I like to leave it in slivers because, first of all, I think it looks better on a plate. And second, because garlic gets stronger and spicier the smaller you cut it. So leaving it in slivers will give you the flavor without an overwhelming garlic punch. Next, and this is one of those ingredients I don't often add, is shallot. Uh, but today I just feel like shallot. I'll only need a bit, just enough to add a slight oniony sweetness. Like the garlic, I'll cut it into thin slivers. Next up, some chili flakes and some Italian parsley. The chili flakes will add just a tiny whisper of heat, while the parsley I'll use for garnish to add some freshness at the end. Okay, so it's not prawn linguine without linguine, so I've got about 300, maybe a little over 300 grams here. That's more than enough for my pasta loving family of three. Interestingly, I only recently realized that my dry pasta of choice is made by Dolce & Gabbana. Yes. Dolce & Gabbana as in the Haute Couture fashion house. I looked as hard as I could. I couldn't find a DNG logo stamped anywhere in a pasta. They really should look into that. That'd be awesome. One thing I always add to my prawn pasta is some sort of alcohol. Often that means white wine, but today I'm going to be a little more adventurous and use vermouth. It'll add a little herbal note that's really nice. Now, vermouth is a fortified wine and it comes in two basic varieties, dry white and sweet red. For this dish, I want the dry stuff. And I'm using Martini brand, which is readily available pretty much everywhere. But one thing I have to be careful about, once I finish with a vermouth, I have to put it in the fridge. It will go off if it isn't stored properly, but in the fridge, it should last up to a few months. Next is another sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't ingredient, and that's tomatoes. I had these mini aromas sitting in my fridge, so why not? Uh, I like to slice mine on a bias. I don't know why, I just do. The last ingredient is a star of the show, prawns. These are frozen prawns that I defrosted and peeled. There are 13 to 15 size, which means that there's 13 to 15 of them to a pound. So they're pretty big. In fact, they're probably a little too big and 26 30s might've been better. But these were on sale at my local supermarket and I can't resist really big shrimp. To prepare them, I sprinkled them with a combination of kosher salt and baking soda. The salt will season them, obviously, while the baking soda will alter the pH of the meat so the prawns remain snappy and crisp even when cooked. Once done, I put the prawns in the fridge for an hour. Which means this was actually the first thing I did before I prepped the other ingredients that you just watched me make. So yeah, this recipe is a bit like a Christopher Nolan movie. It's been running backwards. Now that the prep's all done, uh, the prawns are brined and everything's running forward again, I can get to cooking. Uh, to start, I add a big splash of olive oil to my pan that's on medium heat. And yes, I am using a wok. I almost always use a wok when making pasta sauce because it makes it so much easier to toss later with the noodles. To the hot oil, I add the shallots. I'll let these fry for just a minute before I add the garlic and chili flakes. I don't want the garlic to brown, so I'll only let these go for about 30 seconds. Next in are the prawns. Because they're so huge, they'll probably take three or so minutes to cook. Also, you can't see it, but on another burner, I've got my pasta boiling and a pot of salted water. If I time it correctly, by the time I'm finished making this sauce, the noodles will be ready. All right, the prawns look just about done. So I'll add my vermouth and also turn up the heat just a little bit. I want to boil off as much of the alcohol as possible. So about another minute. The sauce is looking nicely reduced. I'll turn on the heat and add the tomatoes. I'll also take this chance to add some seasoning in the form of some salt and some freshly cracked pepper. And finally, I'll give it a taste. Mm, it's very robust and punchy, and it has that herbal note from the vermouth, just the way I wanted it.
Now I can drag my linguine from their pot into the sauce. This ensures a little pasta water gets pulled in with it. Once everything's in, I'll toss the noodles around. The linguine is not quite fully cooked yet. It'll continue cooking in the sauce and absorbing all that beautiful broth. So a couple more minutes before it's ready. The last few minutes have passed and here it is. My version of prawn pasta. The only thing left to do is to hit it with a shower of parsley from about two feet away and it's done. So what do we have? We've got beautiful, plump, and thanks to the baking soda, crisp and not at all flabby prawns, sitting on a bed of linguine that's glossed with a beautiful sauce that's garlicky, shallotty, and tomatoey, uh, with a mysterious little something in the background, courtesy of the vermouth. I can't wait to dig in. Thanks for watching. I hope you like this recipe, and even more, I hope you give it a shot and try making it yourself. If you do, uh, remember to leave me a comment to let me know how it turned out. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps spread the word about my little channel. I'll see you next week.